What's up everybody, Jamison Redding here with the Road Trip Angler, and I'm down in southern Louisiana at Pat Kayak Rental, and for the last couple of days, we've been fishing out of my salt marsh Heron 18, and I thought it'd be a good time to give you guys just an overview, a walkthrough of how I have this boat set up and what the salt marsh Heron 18 is all about. Saltmarsh has been around for quite some time and I've actually owned a couple of their boats. Now this is the biggest boat in their lineup and it comes in at 18 feet, six inches long, has a beam of 77 inches and that's at the deck and it's gonna weigh around 650 pounds and that's the whole weight. So that's, you know, kind of before you have it rigged out like mine is with the platforms and the trolling motor and the batteries and whatnot. When it comes to powering the Heron 18, you can go anywhere from say 60 horsepower up to 90 horsepower. There's actually a couple boats out there, I think with 115 horsepower motor, but you really get into a weight issue on the stern of the boat and you're gonna lose that capability of having that shallow draft. The boat was designed for a max horsepower of 90. So to get that 115 as well, I think they have to kind of build it for that. And let's talk about that for a second. So Salt Marsh doesn't build a spec boat or a boat that you're going to find at a dealer. They're a direct to consumer boat brand and they only build them kind of custom ordered. So you pick your color, you pick your features and your layout, what you won't wear, and you have a lot of options there. So specifically this video is going to be about what I did and how I set up my Heron 18. So let's jump into this walkthrough. I think I've given you enough background knowledge and I just wanna share how I set my boat up. So we're gonna start at the bow and we'll walk it through all the way to the stern and just go over some of the features that I chose and what I did on my personal boat. Starting here at the bow, you'll notice I've got the Motor Guide XI5 trolling motor. I think this is a 70 pound thrust trolling motor. It's 24 volt and we'll get back into that when we go into the hatch. I'll show you that I have two Dakota Lithiums pushing this motor. And usually I will charge that after a full day of fishing, but running those two Dakota Lithiums, I think they're 54 amp hour batteries that I have ran in series to get the 24 volts that I need to push this. I'm able to move this boat around even in pretty windy conditions. And I do have the ability of anchor locking it. It does have the GPS built in, so I can set that. Moving back from that, You'll see that on the whole boat, I chose to go with the Marine Mat deck kit. Now this is custom. They went and they scanned my entire boat and basically made this custom to fit the boat. And I really love it. Now this actual platform, if you've ever seen Eric Estrada's video where I walked through the Savannah, this platform, this casting platform, I used as a seat on my Savannah and kind of the polling platform. So it's a little taller than most casting platforms, but down here, the higher I can get, especially in this dirty water, the better. So even though this is a bit higher, I really like this. And this is a custom made platform again from Salt Marsh, and I have the marine mat on it as well. And I actually installed this cleat here that goes through the boat. I'm able to use a turnbuckle to keep that strap down. Moving back from the very bow of the boat, one thing I forgot to mention is I do have that pop-up cleat so I can tie off to the dock. But as we move back, you'll see right behind the casting platform, I have a large hatch. Now this is standard on the Heron 18 and you have a lot of deck space, especially if you left this casting platform off, easily can fish two people up here on the deck of the boat. We'll look inside this hatch. It's a large hatch. Now right here in this area behind the hatch is actually where your gas tank is sitting. So your storage kind of starts right here and goes all the way to the bow of the boat. Plenty of storage. And I actually have my life jackets in here, my throw cushion, I have an umbrella. There is the 22 gallon tank. Now that is gonna be a standard feature on the boat and it being up front, it's just gonna help offset all that weight. As we move back from the deck here on the bow and move kind of into the cockpit area of the boat, you'll see that I have an Orion cooler. Now this is an Orion 35, but this is a 35 quart cooler. It's gonna be similar to a Yeti 50 in actual size. So I have that mounted to the deck here in the front so I can take it in and out. From Salt Marsh, this was an option to have that back cushion put up here so that whoever is sitting on the cooler can have a little bit more back support and feel a little more comfortable as we move back. Now on the console itself, you can have the grab bars on the side and there's just a lot of options that are offered by Salt Marsh. 
Now I've got my Suzuki control here. I've got Linko trim tabs. That's gonna be a standard feature on the boat. I also had a power pole installed and we'll take a look at that on the stern, but I have my power pole controller, which is actually wireless and just kind of two-sided tape to the console right there. So I can raise and lower that power pole. I can also do that from the remote. I've got my tack right here, my ignition switch, the powder coated steering wheel. That is, uh, you're gonna have in this boat that it comes standard hydraulic steering, which is just really nice, especially when you're running those tight creeks. Steers really easy and everything. Up top, I got the quad lock that I used to mount my phone to, and that is wired into the battery, so it will actually charge my cell phone when I have it mounted here. And I've got the Lowrance Elite FS. This is the nine inch screen on here. On either side, I actually pulled something over from the uh, Yak Attack, which is a company that makes accessories for kayak fishing. And these are little track mounts. These are called the Yak Attack Mighty Mounts. Uh, these are the Mighty Mount XLs. And that allowed me to put some cup holders on either side, but I can also mount camera mounts or phone mounts, really whatever I want to that track. But being able to move those cup holders on either side of the dash and not actually have the kind of inset cup holders on the dash really helped me out and gave me more space there. But these switches here, this is a standard plate. You'll see it says Encona on it. Again, Salt Marsh and Encona, same company, right? But I have my navigation lights, my build switch, and my accessory switches. Beside that, I had them install a Fusion head unit. I actually bought that and sent it to them when they were building the boat out. And that is powering two 7.7 inch JL audio speakers. As you can see right here, I got two of those on the back of the boat there. So we're gonna move back from there and take a look at the rear of the boat. <laughs> As we move back kind of behind that cockpit area, this is where you really see how much space the Heron 18 has. On this, there are three different storage compartments. Two of them are just dry storage, and the one in the middle is gonna be my live well. That's a 25 gallon live well. And I really don't use it that much, honestly, but I wanted to have it because occasionally we do like to keep fish, especially when my family's with me, and be able to keep them alive. We don't fish live bait a lot, but it is nice having the option to use that when I need to. So we'll open these hatches up just so you guys can see. I've got all my tackle in this hatch here and it's just kind of a mess to be honest with you. This is the live well compartment. And all these hinges are kind of friction hinges so they, they do stay up, but I can actually uh, adjust how much water is coming in and out of the live well by just turning that uh, knob on, on top there. Just a nice live well and it keeps the weight uh, of the water and the fish centered. I've got this cushion here. This is an option as well on the Heron. Really any of their boats, you can have option with that, but it matches the one that I have on the front of the console. And it makes a big difference when you're running in chop for sure. I've got the other hatch open here and you can see again, this is just a big storage area. Inside this Plano is where I've got my safety equipment and all my paperwork for the boat and whatnot. That's a waterproof box. So it's just nice to keep everything in there so I can pull that one box out, access everything that I need. But we'll move back from here and take a look at the platform and the motor and the power pole setup. Back here on the stern of the boat, you'll see that I have that pulling platform and most of you probably know what this is, but I'll, I'll share it because, you know, if you're not familiar with what a pulling skiff is, then you may not know. But basically I take this big long push pole that I have here. This is a stiffy guide push pole. It is 24 feet long and you stand up here and you can control the boat. Now that is a skill that honestly, I still haven't mastered. I learn more every day, but it just takes time. But you can be super quiet and you can push this boat in really shallow water and allow whoever's on the bow of the boat, the angler, or if there's a couple people up there to be able to make casts and not have to worry about controlling the boat. Now this again is custom made for this boat from Salt Marsh and it was a feature that I got from them uh, I guess it would be a standard feature, but I got a powder coat of black to match. And there's some options when it comes to this casting platform of how you have it set up. I also have a V-Marine push pole holder so that if I see a fish or I'm actually also fishing from the back, I can lock that push pole in quickly to that V-Marine holder. And that allows me to not drop the push pole or you know just leave it hanging out in the middle of nowhere and I can make a cast as well, or if I'm just taking a break. One of the things I didn't really talk about in there is that I have these Yak Attack Mighty Mount Excels on either side of my casting or pulling platform here in the back. 
And that again, just allows me to put a cup holder up there or even a rod holder. So if I am pulling the boat or standing on the back of the boat, I can keep a rod back there with me to kind of play cleanup in case the first person on the bow of the boat can't make that, that good cast and get that fish. Now I went with the 90 horsepower Suzuki because of its weight. It's a lighter 90, it's one of the lightest 90s, and it's definitely got the best torque to weight ratio in that class. Some of the other 90s are just gonna really overweight the stern of the boat. So if you're going with like a Yamaha, for example, you may wanna look at that Yamaha 70, or if you really want draft, you may even wanna go down to a 60 horsepower, and the 60 horsepower Suzuki or Tahatso Motors are both great motors and have a lot of power for their weight and that would get you a little bit shallower draft here on the stern of the boat you do have access to the bilge of the boat right here so you can get in there and check all your pumps and things like that pump up the bulb for your motor itself and just get in there to clean and everything if you want again right here on the back i've got that suzuki 90 blacked out if you are looking to get super shallow, and I mean like eight inches or less, you may want to consider a 60 back here. You're still going to be in the mid 30s with a couple people on the boat, so it's still going to run pretty well. I can touch 40. I do think that I need to play around with the prop a little bit and maybe even the height setting on my motor to be able to get a little more speed out of it because I think I could actually get above 40 miles per hour pretty easy if I had that dialed in. As you can see, I also went with the power pole on the back, this is the six foot Pro 2, I believe. Yeah, got that right. It's a six foot Pro Series 2. The reason I went with the six foot is it keeps the height down a little bit so it's not gonna interfere when I'm up there pulling. And honestly, I am usually in less than two feet of water when I'm fishing out of this boat. So I really don't need that taller or deeper, you know, water power pole. That six foot has done everything that I really need it to do. Some people will mount two on the back some people will go with the eight foot. That one six footer seems to be all I need. But real quick on the back here, I'm gonna grab this GoPro and just show you. I've got those trim tabs. And again, that's a standard feature. You can see I've also got my transducer mounted on the port side of the boat. And one of the really cool things about this Heron is you've got this step in the transom or in the bottom of the boat here. And what this does is it allows the water to come off and then kind of rise up. So you can actually raise this motor up a bit. I'm going to play around with raising my motor because I feel like I could get a little more out of it if I had it a little higher on the transom of the boat. One of the other unique features about the Heron 18, and I don't think any other skiff on the market has this, but you have these rounded off or radius transom here. And what that allows it to do is really release the water very smoothly on the back. So it really allows the boat to turn quietly and smoothly. So you get the performance of a shorter boat when it comes to pulling the skiff, but you're gonna have all that room and capability and capacity of an 18 and a half foot skiff. One of the things I didn't really show earlier is just down in the cockpit of the boat. So I'm actually gonna switch over here to the GoPro, which I have right here, and show you just how that rod storage works. I can store up to four nine foot fly rods on either side of the boat. We have kind of a com combination of fly rods and conventional gear in here right now, but I'm gonna show you what those look like. One of the things I didn't mention was that here on the port side of the console, I do have an access hatch and that is gonna allow me to get to that battery and my switches and fuses. This is pretty standard setup here. That's my cranking battery. Also runs my stereo, my live well, pretty much everything except for my trolling motor. Just because I know people are gonna ask, the color of my boat is called Pigeon Blue and it has that desert sand top on it. So if you have any questions, be sure to drop those in the comments. I'm also gonna just be doing a review of this boat and talk about who I really think this boat is for, why I chose it, what I like about it, and what I would change about it. And if you like this content, please subscribe and support the channel. Comment below, tell me what you think, tell me you know, what you would like to see. But as always, thanks for watching. Road Trip Angler would like to thank our global partners for helping support the mission to get people outside and on the water.